Hello again. Uh, in this particular lesson, what we're doing is summation properties. And there's four main ones to use here. Uh, what happens when you just have a constant? What happens when you have a number times a, you know, a variable? What happens when you have you know, a variable plus a different variable? And I guess there could be a constant in there too. And what happens when you have uh, you know, something subtracted by something? Now, the only one that really warrants any explanation in terms of what to do in this particular lesson is this one. Uh, the rest of them are just kind of, you know, they go as they go. Uh, in the next lesson, I'll put two other down, uh, like what happens when you have like an i and i squared. So it's a little confusing for right now, to say the least. But uh, let me go ahead and show you. So let's say you have, you know, like a summation where i equals 1. And by the way, they're all assuming that i equals 1 is your first value that you're starting with. And you're going up to a value n. I don't know what that value n is. Let's say it's 8. Uh, nah, 8's too high. 5. 5 is perfect. So you're 5, 5, 5, and 5 here. So you're going from, you know, you're doing it once, then you're doing it twice, you're doing it 3 times, 4 times, 5 times. Basically what you're doing is you're plugging in the number 1, figuring out what it is. Then you're adding it to whatever it is when you uh, plug in the number 2 or substitute in the number 2, then 3, 4, all the way until the nth term, which is 5. Now, as I said, I'll get to this one in just a moment. So if you have like a, you know, like a 3i, for instance, in a summation problem, it's the same thing as like pulling out the three, figuring out you know what the summation of who this one is. After you get the answer, uh, add it up, and then just multiply by what the you know the three that was in front of the i. So let's say you had um, I don't know, uh, that's a five i equals one of uh, you know five i. Basically, what you do is you pull the five out. You do this, you know. Figure out what this one is, you know, after you add them all up, then you just multiply that answer by 5. That's really all there is to it. Uh, it's very difficult without doing, uh, you know, some of the summation rules, which we'll do next, but the properties you got to kind of learn first. Uh, for this one, you just treat it as two different summations, you know, ai plus bi. So you got to substitute in something here, you got to substitute into something here. That's difficult. So what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to do 1 with the ai, whatever it is, and I'm going to add it to whatever the bi is. And like I said, without the, uh, these are properties, without the rules, you know, you can't just plug it in. So I'll do an example in the next lesson, and hopefully that will be clear. And this is the exact same thing, but instead of adding, you're subtracting. The only one that warrants an explanation, though, is this one. So let me go ahead and, you know, kind of erase this so I have a little bit of room. And let's say... You've got the summation of something from i equals 1 to n of c. Well, you know what? Let's just put something there already so it actually kind of makes sense. Let's say I'm going, you know, i equals 1 um, up to 3, and I've got the number 5. What that basically means is this. I've got to plug in the number i, and I'm, sorry, plug in the number 1 or substitute in the number 1, then I've got to substitute in 2, then I've got to substitute in 3, all the way up to 3 for every i. Well, there is no i here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, nothing there, the answer is 5. Then I do it again when i is 2, nothing there, and the answer is 5. Then I do it again when the answer is 3, you know, when i is 3, nothing there, and the answer is 5. The answer turns out to be 15. Great, what does that mean? Basically what that means is if you don't have a variable that you have to substitute in and you just have a number, all you really got to do is multiply whatever this is and that is together. So 5 times 3 is... 15. So we're going to do a couple of summation rules. I'm not going to do the one for i cubed. I'm going to do one for i squared and i. You know, I never use i cubed anyway, so I can memorize the other two. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, probably really confusing right now, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be super perfect. It actually works better when you just put in an example. But I always like to have this as a reference beforehand so students say, oh, oh this is what you meant. I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what I meant. So we'll go ahead and do that and see how it goes. But for right now, have a good day. Goodbye.